Hey, it's Connor from Fontaine's DC. I'm here with Premier Guitars Big Five. My favorite guitar is a 1966 uh, Fender Coronado that I bought in a uh, Sunneck guitar in Dublin. It's the only vintage guitar I own, and it's a it's kind of a weird guitar. It doesn't really do. It just does a very specific thing, which is that kind of like 60s psychedelic hollow body style uh, sound. And um, it's I think it's so important to me because that shop Sunneck. I used to go in there when I was in college and. Uh, marvel at all the vintage guitars that they had but i had absolutely no money and wasn't able to afford anything there and then whenever we were doing pre-production for our second album we got a bit of money and i went in there and finally was able to part with some money to the to the owner of the place instead of just annoying his head trying trying out guitars i could never afford i think i had seen i, I think they did the reissue and that was the first time that i'd seen them and i'm just i'm a really big like uh brian johnstown fan and like he's always playing like hollow bodies. He plays a lot of boxes, but uh, I just wanted something that kind of uh, was like a node to that kind of style. The bridge pickup on it is actually like insanely microphonic, which is like, is in a lot of ways, probably like something that I should fix. I should probably get that pickup rewound. But uh, I think it just, like when I've used it and I, 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 I fear changing it now that because it's on recordings that it won't be able to, it won't uh, completely do that thing anymore. I only use the neck and the middle position. So it's kind of fine blended in with the with the neck. The neck pickup is an absolute beast on that guitar. So what I kind of do is I, I use a treble boost on my board that kind of brings the kind of woofiness down into like a little bit more of like a bitey kind of sound. My Desert Island uh, album is uh, Tender Buttons by uh, English band Broadcast. It's an album that I just like I can literally just put it on anytime, anywhere and it's just a the mixture of kind of newer sounds and also there's like lots of odes to kind of like Shangri-La type drum beats, you know, Phil Spector kind of production and uh, but it's in the future and Trish Keenan, the singer who passed away is a amazing role model uh, for me. I, like, I, th I think that she's an, an incredible artist. Yeah, that would definitely be the one that I could see myself listening to on a desert island for the rest of my days. I think it would probably have to be people who wear sweatpants. You're not playing tennis, like, you know what I mean? Like you're just... Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe is I don't play like that though, so maybe I don't know that you probably do get a lot of like road rash on your wrist whenever you're like shredding or whatever. But I was just thinks if you're like dressed in like black, looking all like rock and roll, and then you just have like sweatpants on, just like looks a bit ridiculous to me. Like, but whatever. That's that's my that's my opinion. <laughs> One that uh, I'm uh, incredibly inspired by now is the work of uh, Robin Guthrie the uh, guitar player from Cocktail Twins. I just think his layering of effects and what he did, you know, late 80s into the mid 90s was so revolutionary and, and, and really like, not even like inspired guitar players, but almost like inspired people who started, you know, using synths for like that kind of dream pop or like shoegazy sounds. His understanding of, um, of effects and how like a, a delay can affect tremolo and all these kind of things. Just always just like an incredibly unique palette for the songs that he did. Like so, I think I think he's incredible. And he, even his solo stuff as well is uh, is really astounding. It's only something that I like. I'm trying to do now, but it's like so out of reach. It's like trying to you know, say like oh, I'm inspired by Kevin Shields. It's such a high ceiling to really try and reach for that you'll never really get there. Like but. Hopefully you end up somewhere on the, on a balcony, you know, near enough to the top. My secret weapon now, just for like like a go-to thing that has kind of changed my playing a bit, is uh, on the last album I used this pedal. It's a delay pedal. It's called the Echo Degrader. I just used it on like two songs. It was owned by our producer, Dan Carey, or he still owns it actually, but I bought another one and swapped it for him. They're like, all those pedals are different, so it didn't have the exact time that I need the the new one that I bought didn't have the exact like um BPM that I needed the delay to go but um I've just found myself using it all the time now it has this hold function where the delay kind of oscillates and goes over itself and it's so handy whenever like finishing a song is like you press that and it's almost like a dub like a dub delay you know like a siren you can kind of I can put because I change guitars a lot now I can kind of press that and it kind of creates this like blanket of noise that by the time I kind of like bug out my guitar, get another one on, it kind of finishes and I start a lot of the songs like so it kind of gives me a little bit of a, a window to kind of not have too much radio silence in the shows. Just trying to make the show as kind of like 
as flowing as possible. And it has endless possibilities for writing in the future. It's definitely something that I'm going to go to to use other with other instruments. In uh, our song Nabokov, it's like this stuttery delay in that song when it kind of goes into a break, kind of goes... Dum, dum, do, 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 do. And that's the original reason why, because I, I, whenever I did the demo of that song, I just did the delay on the uh, project. You know, like on the computer, you can make a delay go as long and as powerful as you want. Like, but it's kind of harder to find something that does that. So Dan just had this pedal and it was like perfect. And uh, yeah, I'm, I've been in love with it ever since, just because like it, it's just added such a uh, a kind of like more noisy element to my to my playing that um, just stretches everywhere. I did you a favor 